we are going to see the features that are available in Purview and how to set up this account for your organization or for your customer. On this home screen of Azure, we can click on the Microsoft Purview accounts. And in the last video, we created this Purview account that is PView Demo Dev. Let's click on this link. And if you scroll down, you will get this option to open the Microsoft Purview governance portal. Click on this and it will open a new tab for you where it will open the Purview Studio. Let it load. All right. On this home screen of this Purview Studio, this is the Purview account name that you have created. This is showing you some basic information and some uh, quick links for you. For example, currently it is showing that there are no sources that we have registered. There are no assets or no glossary terms. This is the self-service access, self-service data discovery where you can write any keyword and it will show you the results related to that keyword. On below, once you create any assets and access them, it will give you quick links to them on the bottom of the screen. On the left, there are multiple options. This is the data catalog option where you get the home screen, the browse option where you can browse the resources by different source type and as well as collection. We will uh, learn what is the collection and how we create uh, or register the source on Azure Purview. The third is the business assets. I will talk about data map here, how the business assets are created. Finally, the glossary. Glossary is nothing but the business glossary that you create here. We will create some terms and I will explain you how to create uh, the business terms and the glossaries on Azure Purview. The second option we get here is the data map. On the data map, there are several options that are available. Let me just glimpse through some of the options that are available. The data sources. This is the main uh, view you have to use majorly on Azure Purview to register any data source. This is the organization map it is showing on Azure Purview. Currently, you by default, you have a root collection on once you create the Purview account. You can click on view details and it will show you some details about this collection. Right now, we do not have any assets under this collection, which is why this is empty. But later on, we will create some assets and then we will be able to see different assets here. You can go back to data sources. We can create the collections uh, by different mechanisms. Let me just explain you what is a collection. Collection is simply a logical presentation of the organization structure for implementing data governance. A collection can be created by domain. Let's say there's a X organization and that organization have multiple domains like finance, HR, procurement, or maybe some others like marketing. Let's say these domains exist in that organization and each domain have multiple departments. There can be under HR, there can be multiple departments as the recruitment or maybe HR uh, talent acquisition and many more. So to categorize these kind of things, we need to create collections and under each department, you can also register the data sources used by or owned by those departments. On the data sources, once you register any collection and you will uh, able to see the graphical presentation of this whole collection, uh, map of collections. On the left side, you get a list of these kind of collections. One collection can have multiple sub collections as well. If you go to monitoring, you will get various reports by default created for your data map. In the asset types, we call it as meta model. Meta model shows the overall presentation of your organization. How many departments exist? How many business processes are there? How these business processes are linked to different reports or maybe data sets, etc. You can create this logical view of your organization here in this meta model. You get different options, application service, business process, data domain, product system, and many more. You can also create user defined asset types by clicking on new asset type, and you can define the relationships between different asset types here uh, on the right side of the map. If you go to annotation management, there are classifications available in purview where you can define 
the classification categories for each of your business asset. On the data sharing, you can also share any type of metadata that you create on Purview to any other Purview accounts across your organization. On the source management, when you scan any data source on Azure Purview, let's say you are, you are scanning Oracle or SQL Server database, or maybe Azure Data Lake, you get the option to input the scan rule sets. During the scan, you can define your custom logics, which can automatically classify the data assets. Let's say there is a person name. So if you want to classify this person name as a person, so it can automatically classify by defining the system defined classification or the scan rule sets or the custom rule sets as well. Integration runtime. This is just like if you have used Azure Data Factory or Synapse Analytics, integration runtime is nothing but the compute that is offered by Azure Purview to scan any data source. A compute can be Azure provided compute or it can be SHIR, which is self hosted integration runtime also. You can create this integration runtime on Purview uh, in any region, except if you're creating the integration runtime in the VNet, that is virtual network, it just it is just available in six different regions. You can go to the resources or the documentation of Azure Purview to see what regions are available. On the left side, let's go to the third option that is data estate insights. This option provides the detailed reporting of your overall uh, Azure Purview account from different angles, like it shows the data stewardship options, uh, data estate health. And if you scroll down, there are multiple options like asset curation health. And if you go to catalog adoption, it will show you how many users are interacting and searching on your Azure Purview portal. This will help you to find out how this data governance implementation in organization in your organization is uh, it's, a, it's a success or it's a failure because if the users are not coming here and making any changes or searches that means user are, users are not using this portal so that's why it's very important to analyze what next you need to do to uh, improvise in the overall data governance implementation or to expand the adoption of this portal the next option is the policies here you can define various policies uh, such as DevOps, data and others as well. On the last option that is management, you get few other options like overview. I will talk about advanced resource sets later on. On the metrics, you will get some basic alerts configured on Azure monitor, which is tied with this Azure purview. To track the lineage, there is a di direct integration available with Data Factory, but you can also create the lineage with Synapse Analytics as well. Workflow, these are the automatic workflows that gets created. For example, if you are adding a business term or the business glossary on Azure Purview account, you can create this automatic workflow to be triggered, which can shoot an email to your business owners or data stewards or data owners who can approve the request and the business term or the glossary can be added successfully. Finally, the security and access, when you are scanning any source such as Synapse, Analytics, Data Lake, etc., you can create the user defined credentials here and that credential can be used to scan that specific data source. Manage private endpoints. These are important when you are working in the private network and you can create the manage private endpoints to securely connect with the other Azure services such as Azure SQL database, Synapse Analytics or Azure Data Lake. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you really like this Azure Purview series and we will continue on the rest of the features of Purview in the subsequent sessions.